Welcome back. According to the Centers for Disease Control, nearly 24 million Americans have diabetes, while an estimated 17.9 million have been diagnosed with diabetes. Unfortunately, nearly one quarter of them are unaware that they have the disease. To learn more about diabetes, Dr. Sarah McBee from First Care North in Fayetteville is here. Welcome to the show, Dr. McBee. Thank you. Thanks for being here with us Thank today. You. Tell us what causes diabetes. Well, the main causes of diabetes are, uh, if we're talking about type 2 diabetes, uh, we don't really know the cause of type 1 diabetes, but generally type 2 diabetes is brought on by poor diet, uh, poor health habits, poor exercise habits, uh, just lifestyle that has uh, uh, gone on for many years and uh, remains um, hard on the body in ways that uh, creates a, a diabetic uh, profile. What is the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes? Well, type 1 diabetes is uh, basically um, a deterioration of the pancreas. Uh, it has uh, uh, the inability to produce insulin at all. Um, type 2 diabetes, on the other hand, is a um, cell, affects the cell receptor sites where glucose is trying to go into the cells, and it also can, across time, um, cause uh, the pancreas to shut down. I see. How does diabetes affect one's life on a daily basis? Oh, in many ways. Um, uh, probably the biggest thing that I see in my clinic is fatigue. You know, people are um, fairly um, worn out a lot just because they are, their blood sugars are running high or they feel um, they just don't feel quite right uh, and they don't know why so they've come in to be uh, checked out and oftentimes that's when diabetes is found. I see. So you said earlier type 2 diabetes is more common? And oh absolutely. How can we prevent diabetes in type 2 diabetics? Oh that is, that, uh, that's my most, uh, 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 that's my message in my office every mm -hmm. single day is um, you know, people need to wake up in the morning and just like they're thinking about what they're going to do for the day at work or what they're going to do with their children or what they're going to do uh, for fun, um, another aspect of life is how they're going to take care of their health. And um, uh, it's very simple. It's very simple to make a plan for your health and be healthy. Uh, a little harder to carry it out sometimes. Can you tell us how does obesity and nutrition play a role in diabetes and preventing diabetes? Well, uh, obesity creates, um, uh, is created from uh, the diet, which is um, basically uh, taking in too many carbohydrates, uh, carbohydrates that the body can't use. Um, the, the pancreas is trying to produce enough insulin to um, get rid of that glucose that's running around in the bloodstream. Um, the glucose is trying to go in the cells and yet that glucose can damage those cells so that it can't get inside and be used for fuel. And so it, it continues to run around in the bloodstream, so to speak. And that condition gone on for a good many years, it can create those things to break down both the cell receptor sites and the pancreas to create what we know as diabetes because mm -hmm. it can no longer be controlled by insulin. Mm -hmm. Now, um, that condition is known as hyperinsulinemia. And oftentimes we diagnose that when a patient comes into the clinic for a routine physical, routine lab, and um, they might have a fasting glucose of 103 or they might have a fasting glucose of 110 or 120. Those are levels above what's considered normal fasting glucose. And that sometimes is a tip off where we can catch these people early and help them to turn their lives around. So um, regular checkups and we, you know, we can often uh, stop that process before it advances to the stage of diabetes. So that's part of the reason why checking CBGs or capillary blood glucose levels is so important? Well, most people don't have access to mm -hmm. ways to uh, uh, check their CBGs. Um, usually when they come in uh, to clinic, they're getting a whole battery of blood work done uh, along with their physical and uh, uh, the glucose is one of those. Um, cholesterol is another very important aspect of that, but um, the uh, uh, usually it shows up in routine blood work. 
Dr. McBee, what are some of the major complications that can occur in patients who are diabetics and who have poor glucose control? High blood pressure and heart disease. Uh, oftentimes people think of the complications of diabetes as blindness or loss of a limb or kidneys shutting down. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, those are things that happen very late in the disease. Uh, that may take 20 years of poor control to manifest. But early in the disease, people who have uh, uncontrolled blood pressure, people who have um, uh, high cholesterol, um, seem to be more prone to heart disease, particularly in the diabetic population. How important is diet in these diabetics, eating a low-fat, high-fiber diet, in addition to watching their carbohydrate intake? Well, let me give you an example. Um, I had a lady come into my clinic who um, told me that she knew she was a diabetic, that her blood sugars were running in the 300 range daily, and they have been doing that for three or four years. And she just, for some reason, couldn't bring herself to having it treated. But she had come and she wanted it treated. Okay, this is a classic example of the important of, importance of diet. For the first three months, she simply was put on the initial medication that we put most people on for diabetes, which was metformin. She took that twice a day. Now, that would have never controlled a person with uh, blood glucose in the 300 range by any stretch of the imagination unless she had been willing to eat a proper diet, which she said she was, even to the point that she was working 12-hour days and kept a diary. Um, her blood sugars plummeted to uh, somewhere, a fasting blood sugar of somewhere between 100 and 115 or 20, which is very acceptable. And uh, even her two-hour glucoses were in a uh, acceptable range. That is the power of good nutrition. She also exercised, but not a lot, mm. just a little bit. In addition to metformin, what are some other treatments out there for diabetics, type 1 and 2? Well, of course, for type 1, uh, because the pancreas does not produce insulin, the, the main treatment is, is insulin. And uh, I won't even go into all of that tonight. Um, for type 2 diabetes, um, we have sort of different combinations of drugs that we put together to get the blood sugar under control. Um, uh, one is an in injectable. Uh, one is metformin. Um, really, the patient needs to discuss that with their doctor because there are different side effects and different aspects of those medications that I don't, you know, that would be individualized for those I people. See. Any advice for our viewers at home uh, who are watching who do have diabetes and for those who don't, Dr. McBee? Well, for those who have diabetes, um, I would say um, embrace it. Um, uh, be uh, proactive. Uh, think about your health just like you would think about um, uh, raising your children. You have certain things that you want to do or the way you approach your job. Um, I, I think a, a person with diabetes doesn't have to dread uh, that process, doesn't have to dread that diet, but to really embrace it and, and enjoy how good they feel when they're doing the right thing. And for the person who doesn't have diabetes, but is, let's say, um, their weight is, you know, if they are anywhere from 20 pounds or more over their ideal body weight, um, the best thing that they can do is diet and exercise. And I see a lot of people for that. Um, uh, I, I used to uh, promote people going to different uh, um, weight management programs that were local. Um, I used to promote um, certain types of uh, healthy um, diets that you would see uh, on the shelves in, in uh, the bookstore. Um, now I give out my own diet. And the reason I do that is because I found that people have such a hard time. Uh, it has to be so simple. They have busy lives. And if the diet is extremely simple, uh, straight to the point, and they're getting this balanced nutrition, um, they can pretty well stick with it. And, and I've had great success with the diet that I give people to, to uh, use. All right. Great information. Thank you for sharing your expertise with us. We appreciate it.